tell me more about it later. But anyway, that's okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome, okay. guys. We're going to get started in just a minute. So if you just like to say hello and introduce yourselves in the chat, that would be wonderful. Um, and we'll start in, yeah. in Hi, about one minute. Yeah. yeah. I know we've got a lot of people joining us. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Um, and of we course, want to know um, where they, they are, right? Yeah, where, where is they? everyone? Yeah, where are you yeah, guys joining us from today? Let us know. Yes, I'm in Argentina. Yes. Where, are you, where are you, Daniel, at the moment? I'm in Canada. So yeah, okay. we, are, we are on different continents, but on the same side of the world, at least. But yeah, okay. I know we got people okay. from everyone. So we have, yeah, I can see people joining us now. Kim Shinra Ura. Hello. Hello. I can read that. Uh, Helen. Hello. Oswald, hello. Daniel, another okay. Daniel. Hello, hello. Another hello. Daniel, Brazil. Hey, yes. Hi, Brazil. Yeah, uh, I love Takeko, Brazil. Hello, Edmilson, hello. William, hello. All right, perfect. We will oh, get William. started in just a few okay. seconds. We'll introduce ourselves and um, you know, keep the questions coming as we go through. Um, if there's something sure. we can we can answer at that time, we will. And, and if there's anything else, we got a lot of time at the end for questions and answers. So. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us uh, again. I'm Daniel and this is Celeste and yeah. we'll start off with Hi, a everyone. brief introduction. So shall we shall we get started, Celeste? Yeah, sure. All right. Perfect. So um, I'll tell you a little bit about myself first. So as you can see, my name is Daniel. Um, I've been teaching on italki since 2018. So almost at the four year mark, which is wow, time flies. Um, other than Italki, I work as an author, so I've written a couple of books. Um, also work at a university as an English professor, and I'm also a writing coach as well. Um, I teach a range of different English courses on Italki. Um, I run my own teaching company, which specializes in academic writing, and I also host a podcast for English teachers. You might have seen it on Italki. Uh, it's called ESL Talk. And then if I have any free time, I love learning uh, Chinese and Korean on Italki too. So that's me, um, Celeste. Why don't we find out a little bit about you? Okay, let's move on. I will present myself. Now it's my time. Okay, my name is Celeste. I'm from Argentina. Uh, I was born in Buenos Aires, but I'm currently living in Patagonia. Uh, well, I've started uh, teaching on Italki in 2020, uh, 2020. And well, I've actually, I'm an actress. I've studied dramatic art a uh, lot long ago, uh, but then I just wanted to change in my life and I realized I wanted to do something else. I got a job on an advertisement agency and well, um, after a couple of months, I started working on a different area, started learning different things. And I realized uh, that I wanted to do, uh, I wanted to do something related with advertisement. So right now I'm doing a bachelor degree on advertisement. Um, I'm learning Italian. Um, I am moving next year uh, to Europe, to Italy. So I'm really like really excited. If you are from Italy, just right here in the comments, <laughs> uh, please. Um, yes. I would love some advice. Um, and well, I'm also love everything related with nature. I love kayaking, um, mountain bike, uh, digging, doing yoga, uh, meditation, uh, yeah. And of course, everything related with, with art, especially with modern art. Wonderful. Super talented. I feel so lucky to be joined by such a talented co-host today. Thank you. All right, so let's talk about the webinar today and what we're going to cover. So okay. we'll just go move on and we'll take a look at the um, the, the format for today. Um, so there's yeah. four main sections for today. First of all, we're going to talk about targeting learners and producing strategic content. So what we mean by that is how do we choose the, the students that we want to talk to and how do we show our message to them? Next. Very secondly, important thing. Very, very oh, important yes. thing. You're the expert on this. So we're going to learn a lot about that <laughs> a little later. Then um, we're going to talk about your unique teaching strengths. So what makes you you? So already we can see we have so many amazing teachers from all over the world. So we'll talk a little bit about what are your strengths and how can you use them to help you, um, you know, attract students, work with students and build um, long term students. Uh, really important. Then we'll move on to talk about content marketing and utilizing social media. Yes. Excited for that. We got a lot to say on different social yeah. media. Yes, sure. not just Instagram, but Facebook, no, LinkedIn. We have a lot. 
Yeah, yes, one can. Yeah, things. you said it. <laughs> and then finally, we'll go on to best practice and pitfalls. So what are some really good things that you might do to get started? And what are some things you should avoid? So oh, I, pay attention to that part. That's yes, well. yes. <laughs> so I can see we have lots of you here. So keep the questions and comments coming. Um, really looking forward to hearing from you guys as well and answering your questions as they come in. So thank you, everyone. Let's let's get started. Let's move on. That's let's right, begin. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. Let's move on. Uh, okay, so targeting learners. I've chosen this um, phrase, so I'm going to read it for you. Stop thinking on what you want to say as a brand and start thinking on what your audience wants to know, get, see, and listen. Okay, for me, this is so, so important. And you're going to tell me, Celeste, why are you talking about a brand? Yes, you, all of you are a brand, a personal brand. We're going to see it later. So as I said, you're a personal brand and you need to get to know your client perfectly well, okay? You need to start writing like all the details, age, where they live, what things they like, what things they consume and other things things okay yes. um so this is very very important okay why am i talking about client am i not saying a student because this is marketing okay so uh it can't be a patient okay but it's a client so it might sound a little bit weird um that they're clients okay they're students but they're clients as well all right okay Right. Another thing, don't try to focus on selling, okay? Of course, you want students, the clients to, uh, to book, okay, a lesson with you, of course. But uh, you can't uh, be on social media like, please, please book a class with me. No, come on, guys, don't do that, okay? So here I will tell you, like, yeah, the percentage, okay? Like 20 percent selling okay 20 percent of your posts selling and 80 percent content okay mm -hmm. valuable content not just content valuable content so then, so Leslie, did you say 80 yeah. percent content and 20 percent selling is that the ratio we need to think That's about it. okay yes. good to know yes. in market in general this is I've got about this is general okay so we need you need to see okay if it works for you or not but it's like a general rule, all right? Well, um, then try to identify the problem that a, a client has. What do I mean by that? Um, for example, a girl that um, she wants to improve her speaking skills, okay? All right, that's her problem. But you're not going to tell her um, and to talk her in a general way, okay? This is, for example, um i don't know uh clarice okay so i'm talking to clarice and i'm trying to give her a solution okay why she wants to learn spanish for example like in my case um how can i help you and things like this and try to solve them the unexperienced okay not trust okay i'm sending my class come and learn spanish with celeste okay because i'm good i'm just a good teacher no no try not to make that okay in selling experience what is that mm -hmm. i'm just going to give me an example okay and then you tell me daniel what you think about it okay sure. if you agree with me or not uh okay. okay the experience can be okay you can travel you can travel around the world you can see different parts of latin america uh different cultures try new food you can do that for example with a real i don't know if you uh, fall in love with a guy that speaks Spanish. Um, could it be better to communicate in Spanish? Maybe because you can't communicate in English, but there would be like a better connection if you do it in mm -hmm. uh, his own language. Um, and things like this. Okay, it's not just going to the point, but selling the experience. So, what do you think, Daniel? I like it. Yeah, I think so. What you're trying to say is. We're not thinking generally, we're trying to think specifically. Who are the students that I want to appeal to? 
who are my audience and okay. trying to focus on that audience specifically, right? We can't catch all the fish. We have to just yes. look at the fish in our pond, yeah. in our lake. I like that. And yeah, it's about the experience. Yeah, of course, we can learn a language with anyone, with any teacher on Italki as That's a student, that. but why yeah, I should that. I choose? So let's see, why should I choose Daniel? What are the reasons? And we'll get into that a little bit more. So that's great. So I think you're going to tell me something and tell everyone about how we target our learners, right? Yes, sure. Okay, so, so let's take a look at that. Yeah. yeah, let's yeah. move on. Let's move on. So how do we target okay, our learners? Okay, so there's, I know there's a, uh, well, a marketing thing, but okay. Please tell us in the, in the comments, okay? If you know about it, if you heard about it, okay? Um, yeah. All right. So, uh, how do we target our learners? Okay. Well, we need to know them very, very well. Okay. We need to know who our ideal uh, client is. That will, uh, is why I was telling you to write down, okay, different things about this ideal client. Okay um they watch netflix they spend how much money for example they spend they could spend in a class that would be a good point for example mm. i don't know just giving uh some ideas um and uh here what do we have is the marketing funnel okay this is something that we see a lot in marketing and i think it's very very important i will explain four stages okay there are more, they have different names, but today I'm just going to talk about four. Uh, but first of all, what about the uh, niche markets? We need, as you said before, we don't, um, it's better not to try to talk to everybody. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. We need to talk, okay, to a group of people, uh, to our clients, the people that can choose us, okay? This is not for everybody, okay? Uh, so I think you know about it like pretty well. Can you tell us, Daniel, about your uh, niche market? Sure. Um, so as we know now, as teachers on italki, we can actually add a title. There was a new feature added recently where you can add a title yeah, to your profile. Mm -hmm. um, and what I've done now is I've used that to kind of target my niche. So now it says, you know, that I... I do more kind of professional teaching services. So things like helping students with academic writing. So that's my audience. So now I know on my social media, who's my niche market. It's probably university students, probably international university students, international uni university students learning English. Um, wow. And maybe it, I can then focus from there on those different areas. So I know where to begin. I can't catch all of the students in the world that want to learn English, but I can narrow it down and use my funnel to think about the types of students that I want to connect to and that are going to connect with me. Is that is that where is that kind of correct from what you said? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, totally. I think okay. uh, it's uh, we can't sell everybody. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it's to be a specific. Uh, yes. In your case, uh, university students, like you know it, you totally know it. So uh, on your social media, you can't speak to them, okay? You're not going to speak, I don't know, to, um, yeah, to someone that does a different thing. For example, to yes. a teenager, okay? Exactly. To someone yes. who's at uh, high school, maybe. I don't mm -hmm. know. Right. Um, okay, so let's go to the marketing funnel, okay? and the four stages the first one is awareness okay what is this uh for example they are here on instagram they got their phone and they decided just to follow us okay but they don't really know us okay they just okay they're following us so they add us uh to their account but we're not like big deal for them okay we're not important for them Second, in the second place, we have consideration. There is when they start looking at us, okay? Now we're not just someone else. Okay, this is Celeste, for example, or this is Daniel, okay? Like, I like her content or his content, uh, what she's doing, and okay, I'm just gonna 
start like um, looking for some of her stories and things like that, maybe I will write a comment, okay, on their posts and things like that, okay? It's where the engagement starts. We're going to talk about engagement later on, but this is really, really important, okay? We want interaction, okay? Uh, maybe they start comparing uh, ourselves with another teacher, okay? Instead of teachers in a she has like uh, I don't know uh, attitude and I don't know she shows things from from Argentina she loves the slang or things like this. Uh, what the prices? What about her prices? Um, her classes or lesson prices and things like this. Okay, and comparing with another teacher. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, the most important thing about consideration is the engagement part. Please tell me on the comments if you know about engagement, okay? If you yeah. um, read it. Uh, the third, and you're going to tell me, oh, this is the best thing. <laughs> conversion, conversion is when they book a lesson with us. And of course, we get paid. But do you think it's the best? It's the best? Thing? No. I don't agree. I don't agree. I think I think number four is the best. That's it for sure. Yes. For sure, we can have a student, but maybe we just uh, have that student once. So yes. of course we get paid, but is that good? I don't think so. And the uh, number four, okay, is loyalty. For me, mm -hmm. this is the most most important. We want um, the client or the student to choose us because of who we are, okay? Because as I said before, we're a personal brand. So I want my students to choose me because I'm Celeste, okay? I'm not Daniela, I'm not Florencia, I'm Celeste. And explain in a certain way. I just speak in a certain way, okay? I've got my own personality and, okay, I can be a Spanish teacher, but I'm not like the other teachers. They can't be great, but... Mm -hmm. My students choose me because of who I am. Okay? Can I share a statistic with you, Celeste? Okay. So we talk about loyalty and, you know, as teachers, there's lots of choices for students. And as students, there's lots of choices of teachers. And if you make sure that your first lesson or your trial lesson is well organized, well planned, it goes well, you, you, you know, you really listen to the student and you provide them with what they need then there's about a 50 to 60 percent chance they might book a second lesson and then the challenge is in that second lesson can i do all the same things again can i make sure that i provide that great service that's excellent that goes above and does everything it's supposed to and then if you can do it for the third lesson there's pr probably a 70 80 even 90 percent chance that you're gonna that student is going to book you consistently so loyalty okay. is really really important and really key but to build this we need to have good content. So, so let's say, what is good sure. content? Should we take a look? Okay, yeah. Let's, let's take a yeah, look. Yeah, and let's guys, I, I do see all the questions. So thank you for those. I will do um, address them. We do, we do. The um, okay, yeah, great. I'm making notes of, of all these questions. So I, I will okay. come back to you and I will address great. them. So don't great, worry. Great. Thank you though. Keep them coming. <laughs> okay. Well, what is good content? That can be controversial. <laughs> yes. That I'm going to tell. Uh, of course, all I'm saying is just my opinion and some things that uh, we talk in general um, in marketing, okay? Well, first of all, we uh, talked about uh, knowing our um, uh, perfect client, our, sorry, our ideal country or our buyer persona, okay? And if we really, really know our ideal country, uh, ideal, country, ideal uh, client, we're going to know what content okay we need to make all right that's good content it's not the same of course uh, making um for example we just go back to the same um content for university students okay uh than making i don't know um just content for a teenager that maybe it's just looking for something else and it's uh just learning spanish for other reasons, okay? Mm -hmm. So you, the first thing, the most important thing for creating good content is knowing your ideal client. Okay, 
so um well let's just skip the first step because it's more of the same um so let's go to the three lines okay of marketing content uh, and here we can tell us the because we have different ones i think uh so the three <clears throat> lines okay uh of content are what you're going to talk about think uh it about like you have a magazine okay you have your own magazine and are you going if you have your own magazine are you going to talk and write all the time about the same i don't think so i don't think it would work maybe they will buy it once but then again like all the time the same i don't think so so um i think that three lines of content can be good i will tell you mine and then daniel can if you sure. want to tell uh if you want to share it could be great okay so my lines i've got um the principal one that it's education um what i mean by education is like sharing okay just um teaching spanish talking about the learning process that for me is like really, really important. Uh, talking, of course, about some experiences about learning other languages, um, English, Italian, and things like this. Um, and then the other, uh, the others two, are, uh, one is uh, related, we like having a healthy uh, lifestyle, uh, vegan food and sports. I start out just I've done it uh, most of the time with vegan food, but now I want to add more um, things about sports, uh, the things I do, like swimming, mountain bike, um, and yoga, because I've done it most in my sports, um, but I want to do it um, a little bit more in, in my feet, okay? Mm -hmm. And then the other line is uh, traveling, because I love traveling, and I love uh just sharing and showing just taking pictures making videos and i think that's good for yeah for videos for reels actually you can put some music just uh and show in my country maybe next year i'm showing something in other places but uh right now i love sharing my my country and different places uh mm -hmm. but these are my three lines what about yours so for me, my approach is a little bit different, Celeste, but I think this is okay. this is great because this is actually going to help a lot of our teachers as well Is where do they start with promoting themselves and what do they talk about? So we talked before about the, the four stages of the, the funnel, awareness, consideration, conversion, loyalty. We can build that and we can help our students to be more loyal and to convert more students to lessons and packages, hopefully, by having good uh, content. So three lines of marketing. What I usually start with, and if you guys want to write this down, this might be useful. First is what. So what I do. So my tagline might be, I help university students improve their academic writing. Um, who am I? So, you know, I'm, a, I'm an English teacher originally from the UK, now living in Canada. So I have that connection. And then where can you find me? So again, here's my italki profile link, or here's where you can find out more. And then That's like you mentioned, yeah. I want to build that loyalty and I want students to consider and be aware. Okay, so Daniel really enjoys writing. Oh, and he's showing us the process of writing a book. This is great. I can connect to this. Or he really enjoys um, typing up articles. So he, sh he shares the process of how he types an article. I can use this for my own English. Oh, maybe, maybe I'm going to ask him a question. Oh, maybe I can book a lesson on, oh, actually there's a, a coupon for $10 or $20 on italki. So why don't I just use that? Oh, it's basically like one. free. Yeah. Great. So now I have my student on italki. They've connected with me and they've also had a chance to, to benefit from a discounted or even maybe even a free lesson to begin. So that's a really nice way to do that as well through making good content, I think. So that's just one yeah. example. Yeah. And then the last point you're going to say is about storytelling, yeah. right? Yeah, well, sir, Talon, um, what we need to do is just um, write good stories, okay? And when we talk about valuable content in sir, Talon, is we need to share, just open ourselves and share, okay? Um, tell, like, different stories. For example, I don't know, in my case, um, just traveling to England and... 
uh, studying English there, how was it? And all the things I've been through when I got lost in the streets and when it was like shame uh, because I, I don't know, uh, it was hard like at first talking and mm. I felt nervous and different things. Um, why but our I students decided... and our audience can connect with that, right? And they know, totally, oh, I felt totally. that way too. Yeah. yeah, and there's no problem to make mistakes. Like it's better to talk and try to speak because you're going to learn. You learn from mistakes. That is, yeah, uh, just make a mistake. Uh, who cares? Uh, right. Yeah. Perfect. So okay. let's go into a little bit more detail about Instagram specifically. Um, okay. So we'll move Great. on and we'll talk about yes. that. Um, the, most of these words you're probably aware of, but we can just kind of outline the basics to help you get started with this. Um, do you want to go ahead, right. Celeste? Yeah, sure. And of course, write in the comments, okay? Uh, if you use more uh, one or the other, um, the things you know. Uh, well, first of all, you were talking and saying some some very, very, very important thing about us. Uh, the bio, okay? We need yes. to write the first part. We have the bio, our bio. And we need to write who we are and what we do, okay? We don't have um, a lot, okay? We can't make a long text. So we need to be like very, very specific on see what we want to say, okay? Mm -hmm. Then we can try something else and we can change it, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's should we use Should we use emojis? Is it okay to use emojis and- um, It's okay, yeah, totally. Yeah. Some people use okay. it. Yeah, of yeah. course, of okay. course. But I think that depends as well on, for example, I think you and me are not going to use the same emojis. Absolutely. Okay? Yeah. That's it. You need to see, okay, this is my personality. And if you look like more serious than I do, because I'm, I have another personality, of course, yes. we're just going to use different emojis and our content is going to be different and the boys because we have a voice on social media, okay? Mm -hmm. The way we write, the way we talk is our voice and we need to maintain this. This is very important, just write it down. Okay, another thing, this is what you said and for me, this is very important. Uh, we have just one link, okay, that we can put on our video. Uh, so um, the link, I think it should be uh, our I talk a link, okay, to our profile. We can put only one, but if one is not enough, because for example, you got a podcast, okay, and maybe you got just different type of classes, and you can say, okay, uh, you want to put more. What you can do, just use this good tool that it's called <laughs> Link Tree, okay. You go, you can use it for free. You go to the link tree and just put the different links. Okay. Uh, so this is great for really sharing coupons and discount codes as well, especially when yeah. there's promotions. So yeah, this is good. Yeah. Totally. And you can have more than one. So I think it's the best option for, for mm. all of us, but please just put the, the iTalker link. Uh, well, then we have posts, we have videos, uh, like long videos, IGTV videos, and we have reels. Okay. Um, I'm just going to say uh, here that the most important thing is when you uh, think about a content, you could end the content, think where it's going to function better. Is it going to be better? For example, I told you that um, a traveling thing, okay, um, will work better with a reel because I want to show like some pictures, like videos. I want to make it like a quick content um people is not paid much attention really i want to get um uh, yeah a good love to boot good music and just to enjoy it okay just enjoy the view the place and yeah so i in the, in that case i could choose a reel okay uh, a long video if i'm trying to maybe explain something for example uh the verb estar said yes that that is something for that for people uh when they're learning spanish is something really difficult so of course i need more time i cannot explain it in a reel or at least because um it has to do um with my personality probably well the stories please use the stories just um 
some people don't like showing themselves. So there you need to choose. You can, okay, just make, um, I don't know, take pictures, put different things if you don't like talking, okay, in front of the camera. It's okay. You don't have to show yourself if you don't want to. What do you mm -hmm. think here, Daniel, about the series? We're going to talk about this. I'm going to talk about this in a couple of minutes, but okay, yeah, okay. It's, it's a very, very important step. And I'll explain that, but it's very difficult because you might think it's not true, but I'm a very shy person. I don't like really? to talk in front of a camera and tell stories and take videos. And, you know, I think a lot of us are, maybe, please tell me if you, if you agree that we're, we try to be perfectionists and we can spend yeah, hours sure, making sure, one, one sure. video for 30 yeah. seconds. So yeah. I'll talk about yeah, that in yeah. a moment, but yeah. That's yeah. one. That's my experience. <laughs> yeah, but I, the thing is, I love talking. That's a, that's a problem. <laughs> um, okay, engagement, engagement. This is very important. We need to um, generate like this um, thing with the other person. We need them to choose us. We need to talk. Okay, uh, we want if we make a post or we just make a video, we want a comment. We want people to say something or send us a message. And for the stories, what I would recommend you is uh, start with surveys and uh, maybe not with questions, because at first, people, uh, if you put a question, they're not going to write, okay? So start with the surveys, okay? Um, do, or would you like to learn um, some English or song? Yes or no? That's pretty simple. And people will, um, just they will, uh, um, okay, tell you tell you okay if they like or not if they want to know or not okay a storytelling we already talked about it metrics that's a good thing what are metrics we, metrics met, metrics we can know okay uh if they've seen our story um the likes that are not important trust me are not important um because uh, likes are not the same as for example uh booking a lesson you can have a lot of likes, but people don't, um, but you're not selling a class. So, uh, or have, I don't know, 10,000, yeah, 10,000 followers and you're not selling. So, uh, that's not important. But the thing is, you can see which is your best post, okay? Uh, your video, uh, if they are, I don't know, uh, most of your followers are from Canada, from the US, and things like this. On your podcast, on Instagram, on Facebook, on the different, uh, on YouTube, okay? On social media in general. So pay attention to this. It, it's good information. Uh, call to action. After post, you can uh, just um, make a question, for example, okay? Um, okay. Um, uh, what would you do? Um, would you like to go to a place like that? Have you ever been to, oh, I don't know, things like this, okay? Try to put something and make people interact, okay, with mm -hmm. you. That's a call to action. Or sometimes, and um, if you want to learn more, why don't you book a lesson with me? Yep. Give it a try, okay? But remember, not telling all the time. And of course, be yourself and make the difference. Just, yes. I'm Celeste and he's Daniel. And we're going to talk about okay. this right now. This is really important. So, you know, we'll, we'll move on and we'll talk about this now. Maybe you've been teaching on italki for a while. Maybe you haven't. So what's really important on your italki profile, maybe on your Instagram page, maybe on your Facebook page, wh whatever you want to do to promote yourself, focus on you and focus on what makes you stand out from others. So I talk to a lot of teachers and I hear a lot of teachers saying, I'm not getting any bookings. I need to make my price lower. Well, is that the reason? Or is it because you're doing the same thing as everyone else? It's very easy, and I understand because I've been there, it's very easy to just do the same as everyone else. But if you start to stand out, and you say, I'm not trying to do the same as everyone else. I'm not trying to get all the students in my area. I'm saying that this is what I do. This is who I am. And these are the students that I want to try to work with. That's a much better way to help you be successful. So for example, some of you talked and I saw some questions about what do I put on my profile on italki? What do I put in my Instagram page? What do I put in my video? So things like, where have you lived? So in my situation, I can say, 
okay, I've lived in the UK, I've lived in Canada, I've lived in Korea, I lived in Korea for four years, I studied Korean language, I learned Chinese language, I uh, studied as an international student, wow, that's going to help me connect with a lot of students already, what skills do I have, so I can talk about my, you know, my teaching certificates, my bachelor's, my master's degrees, how they helped me and how they can help my students, again, a lot of teachers might just say, I really love learning languages, or I'm very passionate about teaching. That's great, but everyone should be if you're a teacher. So what stands out about that? What is your teaching method? So some teachers just have a conversation class. So let's see, I don't know if it's the same for you sometimes where you've had a class and you just talk to the teacher. Okay, I, I had a conversation, but what's the method? If I, I don't have know. a conquery, I said, if you're a student, yeah. so maybe you're having an English class and you yeah. just talk to, you just talk to the teacher about something. Do you know the method? Mm, uh, maybe not. No. <laughs> right. So if you can say, if you can give the message to your students, this is my method. This is what we are going to do. So you can mm -hmm. clearly progress. You can see how to improve. What are your teaching values? What are your teaching beliefs? What is special about you? What do you do differently that other teachers don't do? And how can you connect with potential students? So for me, I try to connect by sharing my life experience and sharing what I've done in my life because experience and life helps us to learn about each other. And the more we learn about someone, the better we can connect with them. So there's a lot of things, but these are just some examples that might help you and that you might think about here. Um, and the next, if, if we move on, I want you now to think about the students. So maybe you, you, some of you have said, like, I don't know what my niche is. I don't know the kind of students I wanna, want to, to go for. So maybe I'm just gonna start off generally. So what we can do, we'll move on to the next slide and I'll talk to you about the student mindset. So let's take a look at this. That, that's actually what, what, what you said. Yes. Uh, it's uh, the idea of clients. Yes, exactly. So this is really, really important. So again, we don't always think about this. We just think, I'll make my video, I'll make my profile, students will come to me. Well, yes, they might come to your profile. What's going to make them stop on your profile? What's going to make them connect with you? What's going to make them click that book, book lesson or book the trial lesson? Students invest in you. So if we have good social media to support, and we have a good profile page and a good video, that's gonna help students invest in you. What's your system? What's the plan? Maybe Celeste finds my page and she says, Daniel, I am going to England uh, in, in the summer. I really want to be able to communicate with people you know, when I'm buying things and interacting and traveling. So I can say, great, I have this system that's going to help you in maybe 10 weeks, 10 classes. Let's do a package each week we can study these different skills. We can study these examples. Great, I have a plan. So instead of going one lesson at a time, we can do a course or a curriculum. So many of us, I started off on Italki teaching one lesson at a time. So I have one lesson. When is the next lesson coming? I don't know. But if I use my trial lesson well, or I use my first lesson well, let's make a plan. So let's plan out what the next classes could look like. What are your goals? What do you want to focus on? How can I help you long-term? So it's much better to think long-term instead of short-term. That way you're going to get more bookings, hopefully get more packages and get more loyal students. So that's the second point. Next one, what is your unique message? What is your offer to students? What are you going to do for them that other teachers don't do? What are you going to provide for them? Could it be, like you said, Celeste, you can have access to my students' Facebook or my students' Instagram page just for my students. You can have access to my uh, podcast for extra listening practice. Oh. You can have access to the articles that I've written. So what's your unique message? What's your offer? This is really key. When did you last update your profile? So let's say, when did you last update your italki profile? Oh, uh, I think like one week or two weeks ago. That is the correct answer. We should be <laughs> constantly updating our profile. Does it pop? Some teachers have videos from four, five, ten 10 years ago on there. 
is it going to look the same? Are cameras the same as 10 years ago? Are videos, do they look the same as 10 years ago? No. So my message needs to be constantly refined. When we write a paper, when we write an essay, we constantly edit, fix. When we write a book, we constantly edit, fix, improve. Um, reviews. Can I update my reviews so they're more recent? Can I update some more information? Um, is your teaching video the best it can be? Now, it's really easy to just get my iPhone and set up my, my camera and take some videos. Now, if I have subtitles, will that help? Yes. If I have subtitles in English and in Spanish, will that help? Yes. If I have subtitles in English, Spanish, and French, will that help even more? <laughs> I'm widening my net. It takes time, but a good video is what students see first. Your students will see the video first. Maybe they are good, they're going to watch it for five seconds, 10 seconds, 15 seconds. We've got to make mm -hmm. sure we grab their attention and we try to get them to think about considering you as a teacher. And do you regularly update and highlight student reviews? So again, updating those reviews, it looks fresh. Students can see, okay, Daniel had a lesson one week ago. So let's say had a lesson one day ago. And this is what the student said. Wow, I really should have a lesson with her. She's only charging $5 for her trial lesson. I need to book that now. Okay, so these are some really good pieces of advice to help you. Now, I think that how, I'm just, yeah. I'm, I'm always stack changing, not always, uh, not only my um, my video, like the presentation, mm -hmm. but uh, it, it depends how it goes. Because uh, yeah. when I have up and, ups and downs, I just change the method and I try to do some things. Yes. Uh, and then, don't stand like, still, I right? have a always lot of moving. students, and yeah, I just uh, the phrase um, goes up and things yeah. like this. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Like that's great. So next step then, Celeste. We yeah, understand sure. Let's move on. this. Okay, okay. How do we connect it to social media? So we're thinking about mm -hmm. social media now. How do we connect it? Yeah. So I have my students. I want them to get more out of learning with me. I want them to know more, to have more practice, to have more tools that they can use because of me. Oh, wow. So we can use platforms like Facebook and Instagram as a tool to engage and connect with potential new students. So these are not students on italki. Maybe they used italki before. Maybe they signed up. They didn't take any classes. Okay. So you can now use your social media like Instagram, Facebook to connect with them. So actually I'm a teacher on italki. And right now, if you sign up or if you use this link, you can actually get um, your first lesson for free or you can get your trial lesson for $1, whatever it is. Wow, really $1? I should try that. Yeah, you should. So use this to engage and connect with your students. Um, share some small personal stories, anecdotes, daily life. Nurture and build trust. When you first get followers, maybe they don't know who you are, like you said, Celeste. Maybe they don't really care. You're just a face. Mm -hmm. Nurture them like you would a plant or like you would um, you know, some a tree. Start yeah. off slowly and over time, maybe in a week or a month or even a year, they might say, oh, you know what? I really, I'm really interested in learning Spanish now because I'm going to Argentina. So Celeste, mm -hmm. can you help me with this? Sure. Here's a link. Free lesson. Wow. Mm -hmm. Free? Well, almost free. Great. There we go. Yeah, it's a um, process. It's a process. It's totally. a process. Exactly. Um, show your talents and strengths. What are your talents? For me, it's writing. So I, my, my material, my content shows who I am with writing. Is it speaking? Is it test prep? What do you do well? Um, and like you mentioned as well, Celeste, quizzes, polls, questions, they can find out more about you. So where am I in this picture? What language am I speaking now? What did, what was this other person saying? Did you hear that accent? Did you hear that word? Wow. We're getting them engaged. We're giving them extra. We're adding value to that student and hopefully either bringing them to italki or adding to what you already have for them on italki. So this is really important to help you show your strengths. So the last thing to say from me before we come back to you, Celeste, we'll just move on. Okay. It's sure, all about yeah. mindset, mindset. So if you have a piece of paper in front of you now, write down that word, mindset. Why? Let me tell you why. We'll just move the slide on. And this is difficult. We've, we've talked a lot. The hardest step is getting started. Yes, I know I should do social media. Where do I begin? What should I do? The very simple Yo, why? abbreviation. Why? It's like K I S S K I S S. What? Keep it super simple to begin. 
okay? Simple stories, um, motivations, inspirations, your photos, photos that you might have before, keep them. Um, get comfortable taking videos. So a lot of you said, yeah, I don't like to show my face on camera, I'm shy. Maybe my English is not that good or my Spanish or French, my first language is not that good. So maybe I have an accent, I don't want to do this. To build that trust and nurture and connect with your students, we need to start to do this. Don't expect perfection. For videos, keep it short and simple. Um, I've got the slides back, so sorry if you missed those for a few seconds. Reinforce your message, your skills, your passion, your teaching method. It's it's an opportunity, like you said at the beginning, so let's say 80% content. Keep showing, this is what I do. This is what I care about. This is what I'm good at. Um, how did you get started? Did you have these same thoughts at the beginning, these same feelings at the beginning of your journey? Uh, at the beginning, um, I actually started because I, um, well, I, I was actually working remotely. I was living in another province and I cook vegan food. Uh, I've done like a lot of workshops and things like this. So I decided to make my YouTube channel and a Facebook page. Like, okay, I'm going to do it. Like, I'm like that. Like, that's it. And yes. I, I knew, of course, it wasn't perfect. And nothing of what I do is perfect. I know. But I prefer doing than not doing. Exactly. Yes. Know? Like, it's better to I, do something and go back later than just not do it at all, right? Yeah. If I don't do, like, nobody's going to see me. And if they mm -hmm. see me, even though if I'm making mistakes, they can choose me. Uh, yeah. And I've got like different jobs and different things. So I yes. know. Uh, and actually what's very interesting, Celeste, is by making mistakes, you actually connect better with your learners because totally. your learners you make mistakes. Know, Everyone makes human. mistakes. Yes, we're human. Yes. So let's talk about content marketing. Um, we sure. won't go into like super heavy detail, but I, we just yeah, want to give you mm -hmm. some bullet points to help you with each platform. So yeah. uh, first of Facebook all, form, right? Sorry? Use Facebook form, right? Yes. So this is what I wanted to talk about with Facebook. Okay. So okay. with Facebook, how can we use this to get students to, um, you know, support our students on italki? Um, pages and groups can be really good to build community. Okay. All my students can go to my Facebook page. They can all talk, ask questions, share ideas, content. I can do some free training, some free lessons, um, some free content to build that trust and build that confidence and maybe convert them later. Uh, messenger groups can be good. So you can meet with your students. You can talk about topics, share experiences, and other students can guide each other. So you might say, right now, guys, on italki, um, for the month of January, all my lessons are $10. Oh, wow. Great. Yeah. Where do I book? How do I do this? What's the link? Here you go. Done. Uh, live videos and training within Facebook groups. Um, you can go live like we've done on YouTube. Um, where you can do a short lesson, maybe talk about your method, talk about what you teach, talk about who you are. Mm -hmm. Students can get to know you, they can feel comfortable. And then maybe at the end, you can say, if you are interested, um, I have a free coupon here, or I have a $20 coupon for italki, just click this link, you can book your lesson today, like that. So these are just a few examples for Facebook. Um, Instagram, Celeste, can you talk to us a little I, bit about I, Instagram? I have a question. Uh, oh, yes. Can you save the videos? Can you Facebook? save the videos? Yeah. They stay in the group. Great, great. Yes, no. so they're always there in the group and That's you can right feature right. them yeah. and pin them as well. Yeah. Okay. All right, so Instagram, give me your well, expert let's advice. Go back to Instagram again. Uh, well, um, of course, when we are, um, well, first of all, if we write a post, we can put where we are, okay? Uh, of course, I can put Patagonia, I can put Neuquén, which, which is the actual city where am I uh, right now. But I can also put like Ontario, <laughs> okay? You can put That's anywhere. Yes. Yeah, you can put whatever you want. And maybe like people there can see you. The same happens in your stories. So please, especially in your stories, use that mm -hmm. because uh, it can help you a lot. You just... Um, you just put it and just make it like very, very, very little and you just add it, okay? And the same with the hashtag. Always, always use the hashtags. Yes. Not only 
in the posts, the videos, and the reels. Use, use the hashtags in the yes. stories, okay? Yes. For me, this is very important. And what happens with hashtags is that we need to try. We need to try different things. Um, because uh, sometimes something may work, sometimes it doesn't. You can see how many people, for example, um, see have seen the story. Uh, these are the metrics, okay? You know this. And not only that day, you can see it like, um, like uh, the whole month, okay? Mm -hmm. So maybe you've done a story and you say, oh, I think this is not very good, but it was like uh, the one that has more views. So, yes. okay, so just, okay, what's going on here, okay? Yes. Uh, think about the no, hashtag. Uh, yeah. yeah. So another teacher that I work with, she made a video about a door, like a door on your house. It got okay. 600,000 views. And now she has more than 30,000 followers on Instagram because of that one video. Wow. So that's it. You Sometimes do it. you don't know. You don't know. And something yes. you think, no, this is amazing content. People will love it. And they don't. And then you do something else that you really like, don't dress very much. Yeah. And yeah, it only works. Uh, so yeah. always Wonderful. give it a try. And with hashtags, uh, yeah, let's try mm -hmm. and see. Um, which are the uh, ones that work better for you. Sure. Um, and let well, me the, quickly, after these yeah. six, we have finished. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, let me quickly Please talk go. about um, LinkedIn. And thank you for your questions. I do see them. I will answer them. And Celeste will also answer them as well. Just okay. going to quickly talk about LinkedIn. Now, do I use Facebook? Do I use Instagram? Do I use LinkedIn? It depends on your audience. For me, okay. in my experience, oh, wow. university students, maybe business professionals, if you do business um, teaching, you teach business professionals, maybe depending on your audience, LinkedIn can be a great way to build a network um, of clients, not just students, but clients as well. You can choose the location, the language, the skills. There's more of a community feel on LinkedIn. So comments, um, likes, um, sharing is much more common than maybe on Facebook or Instagram. And it's usually and shared you like and it's writing, more visible. Because you like writing, yes. right? Yes. That's what I'm saying. So it could be, it could be depending on your audience, but also a lot of business English teachers, they also use um, LinkedIn really well as well. Um, you can also just share your content, your videos, your training. It can all be shared and promoted the same as Facebook, the same as Instagram. So it has all the same tools. So this is another mm -hmm. useful one. And then finally, uh, we're going to talk about podcasts. So let's yeah. have a look at this. We can both talk about this a little bit. Yeah. So both myself and Celeste, we both have podcasts. Um, different ones, and, different ones. Yes, different, different ones. Different audience, different audience. And the question is why? Why do we have podcasts? Well, this is not only for students who are not on italki, but also for our students that we teach on italki because it's a great way to pick up new students. So I, I share the um, podcast on italki's community and quite a few students have said, I love your podcast. Can I book a lesson? Sure. Why not? So it's a, that's why it's one great way. And students can have extra content, extra lessons. So maybe you do a lesson on the environment. Why don't you do a five minute podcast or 10 minute podcast on the environment? Okay, extra content, extra listening, vocabulary. Students can guide and influence. So maybe, you know, if, if Celeste was my student, I might say, Celeste, what do you want to learn about next? What should I make the next episode about? Oh, wow, you, you listen to me, you care about me. Okay. I want you to talk about Patagonia. And they, okay, great, I'm from the UK. I know that there are many people from the UK who actually moved and settled in Patagonia. Let me talk about that. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that's and then, creating like a relation, that relationship. Exactly, that you know, builds that yeah. loyalty, right? And then the, the italki podcast, if any of you guys do have podcasts, you can promote them on italki. More students will follow you and hopefully book a lesson if they like what they hear as well. So mm -hmm. that's um, podcast. Did you want to talk about talk a little bit about this, Celeste? Yeah, sure. Uh, I do have my podcast uh, with my father. Uh, it's called Argentina en tu casa. Uh, and of Argentina course, is about my house. Argentina, Ar Argentina in your house. In, in your, your house. house. There we yeah, go. Yeah, in your house because yeah. I need to uh, book like, a Spanish um, lesson. <laughs> okay, you know it. <laughs> Just kidding. So, uh, um, the thing is that I, we talk actually about uh, Argentina, different things. And when you said uh, what they want to you know, I ask on Instagram. And of course, I ask my uh, students uh, on italki. 
Mm -hmm. uh, one of the last uh, episodes we made was about uh, Christmas, Christmas Eve in Argentina. And it was chosen by a girl from Russia. Okay. Wow. So, uh, she just, um, well, they answer some questions and we chose um, like uh, the one she proposed. Uh, and then I use it a lot uh, with my classes, in my classes, because, um, well, some people just listen to the to different podcasts, to different episodes, and they, they tell me, okay, uh, they want to know more, because first of all, they practice their um, listening skills, which for mm -hmm. me is really, really important. And they need to have questions. So they listen to it and they, they come to the class. That's the way it, it functions. And of course, I ask them um, if they want to know more about one thing or the other. Uh, yeah, so for the classes, I think it really, really uh, work. So Celeste, let's let's move on to the next slide. Yeah, please. Um, because you want to show your best practice just briefly, because okay. I know obviously yeah, we're we conscious of time. time. So okay. yeah, it's yeah. okay. Uh, okay, I'm just going to share with you some things um, about what I've done uh, on Instagram. Uh, well, I do love IGTV. Um, well, I've wrote, I made a mistake here. IGTV, okay? Um, I love it because I love making long videos. I love explaining things, okay? So for me, some short videos are work real well, but I love explaining. And for that, I just need more time. So mm -hmm. IGTV videos that can be uh, 50 minutes long uh, are good for me, okay? This is one of my, yeah, one of the things I, I like the most. Then I think Instagram like gave me a lot of opportunities because, um, well, as I said before, you never know who's watching you. You don't need to have a lot of followers. You just need to work. You have to be there and work, work, work. It's uh, uh, hard work. This is it. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I had the opportunity. Would you say? To would you say RTV. to be consistent is important, that's Celeste? It, consistent, Consistently, of course. Yeah. Of course, yeah. yeah. That's it. Yeah. Wonderful. That's, it. that's a word. The key word. All right. um, yeah, so I've cooked on TV many times, I've been um, on the radio, um, I did some uh, things for big accounts and they paid me because of that, uh, and I never thought that that could happen, you know, when you have yeah. like a small account, you say, no, no, just work because your things can happen. Um, and then uh, I had an opportunity this year to work uh, on a bilingual school here in Patagonia um, and just give some face-to-face -face classes here uh, in Open. So it was good for me. It just gave me opportunities, like um, job opportunities, actually. Um, well, uh, I love doing lives. This is the, one of the things I love the most. Uh, this guy that you can see there in the picture, he's um, it's not me in Spanish. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> the one is behind me. Um, his name is Daniel, actually. You That's have what I said. The, same, yeah. the, the same name, yeah. And he's a teacher, a Spanish teacher, and we did a, a live together, and I really, really enjoyed it. It had a lot of engagement, and uh, yeah, I really like. His method, okay. His teaching method. Uh, and I've done a lot of uh, lives with uh, tutors and teachers from Italki because I love meeting people from other places and sharing um, our cultures and things like this. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And what else? Well, what I said, like followers are not. Um, necessarily are uh, customers, okay? No, no. Uh, so don't think about having a lot of followers. Uh, think about have a, having loyal followers. Yes. Instagram is not a teaching yeah. tool. It's just a way to connect with your learners. Don't think about a way to teach. It's just to nurture and get your learners. So there's some 
best practice and some pitfalls that we'll share just to wrap up. And I see your yeah, questions sure. coming, so we'll get to those in a moment. Okay, um, okay. There's just five things that I want to share with you before we Great. finish. Thank you okay. all for joining us and for your patience. We're going to get yeah. to the questions in just a few minutes. So how do we harness social media to empower yourself when I talk you? This is what this is all about. So the five things I would say, one, think about your audience, your target, the students. Who do you want to appeal to? Who can you serve best? So that's the first thing. Secondly, engage your students, get them to invest in you. Students never forget a great teacher. You know, I remember in elementary school, I can still remember my favorite teacher. Students never forget the great teacher or a great teacher. Typo that. Right. Um, focus your message, your offer to students. Make sure in stu uh, students know exactly what you offer. So, okay, I need help with my um, essays. Daniel is the go-to. Perfect. Um, I need help with my Spanish. Um, Celeste is the go-to. I know I just go to that person because I've seen that post. I know about them. I know what they do. I know I can go to them. Four, plan ahead. Move from one to one classes. To When I mean one to one, I mean one lesson. One lesson. Move from the one lesson at a time to course or package-based teaching. And focus on results, not price. Don't say, my price is too expensive. Well, that's not the focus. The focus should be, these are the results that I get. These are the positive experiences I've had. This is what I do for students. Not, I'm the cheapest. Because if you're the cheapest, you're also going to be the tiredest and the poorest. So don't focus on price. Focus on results yeah. and what you do for students. So uh, we'll get to your questions in just a second. Um, so here, when I say about this, I'll just clarify very quickly. Avoid general teaching. What do you do? I teach English. I teach Spanish. Okay, lots of students, but a lot more competition. Two or three lesson types maximum. Don't try to teach 10 things. We're not able to do that fairly and consistently. Be detailed and specific in your descriptions. Don't say we can talk about a topic. Well, no, we can use this and we can use this. We can try this. We can do this. And what would you be looking for as a student? Always think as uh, think about the audience. Think about the student. Okay. Secondly, we talked about engagement. So we'll move on to engagement. Make a personal connection, we said. Take an interest in students. Care about them. They care about you. They've, yeah. they've, they've booked a lesson. So care about them. Use trial lessons to listen to students, understand their goals, and create a plan. No. In other words, book a, a package lot, of course. A lot of students that you know I had a trial lesson and like the tutor or the teacher talk too much. Yes. Please You're there pay to listen. attention to the students. Yes listen to your students and then support them outside of social uh, outside of the class so instagram facebook podcast whatever you do that's going to add more value and keep them loyal to you it's like okay, next. Giving, uh, something else to them yeah and it's just adding free. value it's adding yeah, value to your it. brand right yeah all right so next we'll talk about part three which is the focus your message your offer so what makes you unique as a teacher what do you do that other teachers don't do what can you offer students that most other teachers cannot? How will you teach, guide, and support your students? Very, very important. How clear and simple to follow is your messaging, profile, video? I see essays in profiles, short, simple bullet points. I'm a student. I'm not an expert English teacher. I'm not an expert English speaker. I just want to know easily, who are you? What do you do? How can you help me? Okay, next. This is probably the biggest takeaway. Do you want one lesson with one student? Or do you want 20 lessons with one student? Do you want $20 for one class? Or $19 for 19 classes? So this way, you can help students reach their goals and progress more quickly. You can also build genuine, long-lasting students who will support you, who say, Daniel's great. I told my friend, I told my coworker, I told my cousin to book a lesson with him too. This has happened to me many times. So that's why it's really important to get those first lessons as the best they can be. And then finally, last thing today, and then we'll answer all your questions. Focus on results, not on price. I'm not a math expert. Celestia, I know you're not a math expert. Lower price equals 
competing for the same students. So students will look and they'll say, Daniel is $5, Celeste is $4. So I'm going to book her because she's cheaper. Do you want to be the, the expert teacher or do you want to be the cheap teacher, Celeste? Uh, no, of course, the, the expert teacher. But yeah. as I said before, like, uh, it depends on the moment. It really yes. depends on the moment. Because yes. sometimes I know um, if something is that not going on or I don't know, or I just uh, was in an eye hockey for a while, like I need to get a lot of students and then um, just, yeah, uh, yeah, change the price. But of course, being the, the expert teacher, yes. or for example, know that they choose me for a certain reason. For yes, example, this is what I'm saying. Accent, for my accent, because in Argentina, yes. we pronounce and we talk in a certain way, or yes. because I'm vegan. Some yes. people, okay, it's like, oh, she's vegan and I love the rest. I don't know. I'm <laughs> so the it. higher price, like I said, students will choose you based on results. It's not, I'm taking a class with Daniel because he's cheap. No, it's, I know that Daniel gets results for his students. He helps them and they, they make progress. They reach their goals. That's what's important. So what will you offer the student? How will you add value? Do you have a curriculum, homework? Do you give feedback? Do you have a student homework. Facebook group? Do yeah. you have free training? All these things here. Okay, mm -hmm. so and the comments. Then you're gonna have good comments. Exactly. I like homework, for example. When they like homework, I love giving them homework. And just okay, if you did a homework, you can send it to me. I'm going. I'm going to send it to you before next class. And yes. I think that makes a difference. For example, absolutely. So yeah. So those were our key takeaways. Hopefully, that's helped you learn a little bit about social media how to use that to improve yourself on italki and also to get students from italki to social media and get students from social media to italki. So lots of great questions here. Me and Celeste will do our best to answer them. So we will answer Hi. those questions for you now. So question here from Brady. We can both answer this, I guess. Okay. Um, what is the best method for creating a podcast? Well, if you want to start super basic, Brady, if you have an iPhone, this is amazing. It has a great recorder on it. Put it down in between two people. That's a great one. If you want to be a little bit more advanced, as you can see here, I have a, a microphone. It's called a Blue Yeti. It's about $200. Um, this can be really great with a few tweaks. Um, and in terms of software, Brady, um, I know, Celeste, you use Anchor, right, for your podcast? Yeah, I use Anchor, yeah. and they can listen to my podcast on eight platforms. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I use yeah, something called Al Anchor. Just made it. Yes. yes. Uh, <laughs> it just spreads it everywhere. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's feasible. Apple yeah. Podcasts, uh, I don't know, Google yeah. Podcasts, like everywhere. Yeah. yeah. So and it's Spotify, really simple. Yeah. That works better. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. It's Great question. That for me, the most important thing before just creating the the podcast is what are you going to talk about? It's like yes. the same with Instagram or. Just choose the topic, yep. go to the niche, go to the niche, to the market niche. Exactly. Niche market. Yes. Maria, uh, Maria Cass, I'm not so familiar with social media, but after your webinar, I'll be surely start with it. Thank you so much, Daniel. And grazie. Merci. Grazie so, so mille. Grazie mille. Yes, grazie mille. I am oh, Lee. Okay. Yes. Anyway, yeah. thank you for that. That's really nice to hear. Liz, uh, Chen, Prego. Uh, I was looking for a webinar like this. Thank you, Aitoki. You're welcome. I'm happy that I got to be a part of this and I'm happy to yeah, share yeah. that with you guys as well. Any other questions? I saw a few from uh, earlier on. Here we go. So have a YouTube channel with 70,000 subscribers, but I don't use Facebook or Instagram, but I want to start. But one of them, not both. Should I choose Instagram or Facebook? Who is your that's audience? That's a good one. That yeah. would be my answer. Yeah, um, but that's for me a good one. Be a yeah. good one because uh, when... Um, he said, not with both uh, of them. Just please start to think, okay, I don't want to be like everywhere because you don't need to be everywhere in every social media. No, so in this don't. case, Udo, try to think where your audience is. It mm -hmm. might be Instagram or it might be Facebook. Right. Um, yeah. It's, it's a tough question. Um, I would say start... Probably if you're new, start on Instagram first. I think it's a little bit easier to get started. Um, and I think Facebook is slightly a little bit more 
older. So if your students are older, maybe it's better. But all the kids these days are on Instagram. And even the next generation is probably going to be TikTok. But I would say Instagram will probably be the best place to get started, I would say. Um, And especially for those places as well, if they're learning Urdu. Yeah, I would say Instagram is probably the best for that. That's a great question. So... Without niche and discovered sometime after seeing which target market you cover with. Mm-hmm. Sure, for sure, because uh, that's a very good question. Uh, probably you don't know who your <laughs> perfect client or your ideal client is. Right. So uh, you can't start creating creating content that uh, valuable content, good content, and then. Mm-hmm start seeing the statistics okay so uh there you're going to discover in some way your niche market and Mm. of course then you're going to create uh, more things related to that people okay to that group uh but sometimes it's hard at the beginning at the very beginning Mm -hmm. it's not easy it's not something that you will like okay i'm just going to write who my ideal client is and i'm just going to get to know it uh, now and uh, you can always time. change your niche as well there's not there's nothing to say that you have to stick with one niche you can change that you can tweak that over time if you find that oh. something's working for you so again maybe start off with a maybe a, a wider niche and then as you progress more you can start to get more and more focused with that but it's a great question mm-hmm. it's not easy it's not easy yeah sure yeah yeah uh Munjay, give it a try Munjay. give it a try <laughs> <laughs> yes. What to put in our italki video to get your niche? Because the video is only three minutes. So it needs to be compact, simple, and interesting. So Munjay makes a really good point here. Um, now, I don't get the part of the three uh, because the video is only three minutes. Oh, the italki, sorry. The, yeah, the, the, about the time limit. Yeah. And, and Munjay makes a really good point because usually when students are looking through the, the profile, they generally just watch the video maybe for 10, 15 seconds, right? So most, this is what most videos. Hello, my name is Daniel and I'm an English teacher on italki. Yeah, I know this. That's why I clicked on your profile. So maybe start with a question, start with a hook, start with something a little bit more different. So I think on my profile, I said, you know, this is what I do. And I asked the question, you know, are you ready? Are you prepared? Are you start? Are you, do you want to start getting results right away? Do you want to start improving your skills immediately? Yes, I do. Okay. Let me answer more. Let me give you more. So that could be a good way to do it. Munje. What I would say a, a tip, um, I guess it's an English tip is focus on the five W questions. Who, what, when, where, yeah. why? So who are you? What do you teach? Um, when? So how long have you been teaching? Um, where Where have you lived? Where have you been a teacher? Um, and why? Why should students choose you? So you should choose me because or I can do this or I can give you this or I have this or we can try this. So that might be a nice way to start just to get it concise. But then also... You might be doing it in another language. So I'm guessing, uh, Munjo, maybe it might be Korean or another language. So you might have to do it on both sides. Now, a lot of teachers record in two or three languages. Yeah, if, I do that. Yeah, which is fine. <laughs> so make sure if you do that, if it's, for example, Spanish, Spanish, English subtitles, English, Spanish subtitles, then that way you're, you, you can appeal to everyone, right? Okay. So that could be, a few, <laughs> am I giving you some advice too, Celeste? <laughs> no, no, it's, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, yeah, sure. The subtitles sometimes. Uh, yeah. I, I never put subtitles actually on my italki video. Yeah. To be honest, but, uh, for sure you can put more than three minutes. Yes. Uh, I think my video is about five minutes. Okay. okay. I, I yeah. told you, I talked too much. But it's it's five minutes. So, um, yeah, you need to see uh, the resolution of your video, but you can't put a five-minute video, okay? Mm -hmm. For my Um, advice would be hook at the beginning and a call to action at the end. So if you want to get started, go ahead and book a trial lesson right here, Mm -hmm. and we can get started right away. We can make a plan right away. Look forward to seeing you soon.
Great. Yeah. yeah. That could be interesting. Good question, though. Great question, Manjay. Uh, Viento Alicio. I don't want okay. to show my face, but I'm dying to use social networks and teach a lot of things to my students. What can I do? Where do I start? Okay. That's um, not a problem. For sure, no, it's not a problem. That's what I was going to say. Um, really, you, most people um, like go uh, through the same thing. They don't mm -hmm. want to talk in front of the camera. Most, mm -hmm. uh, they don't like it. Or they don't like making lives. They're like, oh, um, I've asked a lot of people to make lives, to make Instagram lives. Um, yeah, because I really enjoy it, but people in general don't. So what you can do is uh, share content, share other things. There are a lot of um, free tools. For example, you can use Canva, okay? And create some things, create stories, create posts with different things, okay? Just choose your style the way you want your, I don't know, for example, your Instagram look like, your feed look like. Uh, but you don't need to um, show your face. Uh, no, you need. You don't need to record yourself. Maybe what you can do, uh, you can talk. Just record your voice in on the reel, and that could be an option. So you mm -hmm. just okay, put some slides and your voice, so they know. For example, it's, I don't know, like a reel about pronunciation. Okay, so a slide and your voice, and that's that's it. Yep. Yeah. You don't show your face. That you don't have to. Give it a try. What I was media. going to add to this is maybe instead of if you don't want to show your face, show your neighborhood, show some places, not not yeah. your house, of course, but maybe your area, your neighborhood, and you can maybe talk while you're walking. So people don't see you. They see what's on the other side of the camera while you're speaking. That could be another nice way to get more comfortable as well. It's a great question. And thank you, yeah. everyone, who's uh, for the kind words. Um, appreciate that. And Aya, thank you. Um, Kimshi Naura, thank you. Uh, Kazuhiro, thank you. Uh, Maria, Takako, here, says, thank you. We have another question. What about yes. using a blog for the grammar explanation? Uh, I think a blog, if you have a blog, it's a great tool. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you why. Um, yeah, like having a website. Uh, a blog in this case, can, it's great because what happened with social media? Uh, it's like Be one day it can't disappear, okay? For example, it's what's happening uh, right now with Facebook, okay? Less people are on Facebook. So you just can, you're going to Instagram, their TikTok, I don't know, Spotify, whatever. So if you have a blog, if you have your own uh, website, that won't disappear, okay? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you can have contacts, okay? Uh, just the emails from, from people, try to do, um, how say, like a Google, not a Google paper, like. Like a um, Google Doc? A Google Doc, and mm -hmm. they uh, just put some information. Uh, but yeah, for sure, for me, the blog is the best thing. Yes. Have social media, but have the, the blog because social media might disappear. And Maria, the beauty of content is that it can be repurposed and recycled. So you can write that blog. You can copy that blog and put it on Facebook. You can copy that blog and put it on Instagram. You can copy that blog post and put it on um, in, uh, LinkedIn. You can make it into a video. You can make it into a series of videos. You could make it into a podcast episode. So you have lots of possibilities with the same material. So, yeah. if, for example, if you just put um, a part of the um, uh, of the doc, okay, of what you uh, write on Instagram, then you can tell people, okay, if you want to continue reading, just go to my blog, okay. Yep, so that's exactly. kind of a call to an action, and mm -hmm. they just visit the blog. Yeah, great questions. This is great. <laughs> um, yeah, Helen, I think you're right. Yeah, for for Viento, I think podcast could be a great option as well. We didn't mention that, so yeah, that works. Um, some more questions. We've got time, so we can definitely try to answer these. Can we add a short video while teaching our student in our italki video? Um, I'm not sure what... Could you clarify the question a little bit more? Can we add a short video while teaching our student in our italki video? Hmm. I'm not sure what you mean. Yeah, I don't... I can't get it too. 
can we I'm add not sure. Did you want to reach me out to an owner or talk about it? Could you maybe clarify the question again? I'm I'm yeah. not quite a hundred percent certain on that one. I'm really sorry. No. Um, I was thinking about like the board. If if you like mean that, if you mean your um oh like we record while teaching our student. This is very tricky. Um and again, I wouldn't necessarily do this without there's potential legal issues with this. So if the student is happy and you're happy, then I guess you could, but it depends how you're going to use that. So I can't, I don't want to give, um, I don't want to give, uh, I guess an incorrect answer here because this could cause some potential issues. Um, what might be better than a video is just a review. So if a student wants to leave a review or a, a video review, maybe 15 seconds, I learned this, I did this, this is how it helped. That might be fine, but just make sure you get that permission and that it's, it's agreed because um, that could yeah. cause some issues. So just be careful with that, I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I know what you mean, though. Yeah, if the students agree, perhaps um, that could work for sure. But again, just make sure that they're, they're happy. Yeah, as long as you get the permission, I think that's fine. Just want to be careful with that. Okay, we still have a few more minutes. Um, so please do, please do feel free to keep the questions coming. I see a lot of good questions okay. in here. So we'll try to answer some more for you. Okay. Okay. So yeah, just okay. just before we wrap up as well, if you guys do have any more questions and we didn't have a chance to answer them, um, we'll be more than happy to, to, you know, feel free to reach out to me and to Celeste as well. We'll be happy to answer those questions for you. Oh. Um, and I hope that you were able to kind of see that, you know, being a teacher on italki and teaching on social media, they don't have to be separate. They can be connected. They can actually cross over and you can use italki to you know, promote your social media and vice versa as well. Um, mm -hmm. So I hope you found this useful. The recording Bye. will be available on YouTube as well. And feel free to reach out to myself or Celeste, and we'll be mm -hmm. uh, hopefully getting in touch with you again soon. Thank you so of much, course. guys. If you have any questions, just spark you off and yeah. Yeah. All righty. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you, you, you so much, much. guys. Take yeah. care. And thanks for your time today. Really enjoyed this. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. See you soon.